as you can expect, some more issues started to pop up, but there was a, another issue that was related, but Tesla didn't have everything to do with it, and it has to do with the charging. So let me get to that story right now. With the charging, I had contacted this company, had them come out to look at my house and give me a quote on what it would cost. And their quote was really high. It was super high. It was higher than what I was hearing from most Tesla owners. Most Tesla owners were saying an average of $500 on the installation of my high-powered wall connector because I knew for sure that I wanted to go that route. So I was thinking 550 bucks for the high-powered wall connector and then roughly $500 for the installation, which, you know, had me coming out of pocket about $1,000 or 1100 bucks at the most. No big deal, right? Wrong. So let me just go on and tell you that that quote ended up being a lot higher to the tune of just shy of $1,500 just to do the installation. And then of course I bought the high powered wall connector so I was over $2,000 with that installation. Okay, so we're gonna go over the service order from the electrician who will remain nameless for this. The reason I'm gonna leave them nameless is because they honored everything they were supposed to do um, and I don't want people to take it the wrong way like I'm covering up for them or anything. They they literally have done everything they were supposed to do with this installation. They, they came and made the work right. So I'm going to leave them out of it. This is the actual service order. I need to tell you that I kept having to reschedule with these guys. I must have broken the appointment easily four times before we finally got a solid appointment booked because I told them up front, I said, look, I'm having issues even getting the car delivered and I am not going to install this Tesla charging station when I don't even have the car. Until I have the car, even though they have my money, until they deliver my car, I am not putting anything, I'm not, I'm not gonna alter this house at all. The first item here is two-thirds Romex circuit. Uh, yeah, this is uh, provide and install two-thirds copper Romex wire per foot. This is where they really got me. So there's your quantity at a rate of $15, and they've got me for 600 bucks on that. Pretty brutal. Anyway, car charger install. Install new car charger on wall. Includes mounting and connecting car charger. Does not include circuit breaker or charging unit. L1, location, garage, that's $159. Breaker 2, replace L1. Provide and install two-pole breaker for Tesla. Panel, cutler, hammer, BR, whatever that means. I'm sorry, I don't know right now. Breaker type and size, probably has something to do with breaker. Cutler, hammer, breaker, okay? BR, 178 bucks. Permit, Atlanta. Info needed to pull permit. Power Company, Georgia Power. Requested inspection date, Tuesday, uh, February 21st, 2017. Secure permit and coordinate inspection in Atlanta city limits. Homeowner is responsible for scheduling and providing access to the home for the inspector. City of Atlanta inspections must be scheduled 24 hours in advance. City of Atlanta inspectors require the house to be open for an inspection for a two-day, 48-hour window. This is the name of the company may attempt to contact your inspector for you the mornings of the inspection to receive an approximate window. However, City of Atlanta inspectors rarely give windows or work with homeowners. This is true. Let's go to the next page. This is the final page. Item, Surge Pro Panel. This was the surge protector that they wanted to put on. Anyway, it's provide and install Eaton Ultra Panel Surge Protector in Electrical Panel. Includes surge protector installation, lifetime replacement warranty, and $75,000 manufacturer's damaged equipment warranty for household appliances with electromagnetic motors. Electronic equipment require point of use surge protection to qualify for warranty. C, and that's the electrician site for replacement warranty, and Eaton for limited manufacturer's warranty. Panel. 
uh, basement main electrical panel. Okay, so there you go. There, there is the whole total. There was no tax on it. It was fourteen seventy five. Part of the reason they said that they had to charge me so much is because they had to run this cable from the breaker here. They had to run it all the way up through here and then through the other side of the wall, as I had shown you in the other video. So it goes right through there. Either way, once it was installed, I must tell you, I was very pleased. There was a minor issue in the beginning and they went back down into the basement and sorted out whatever it was and it was no big deal. The one thing that kind of irked me a bit is, you know, when they left, I noticed that my box for my high powered wall connector was missing and they took it with them. And I just, I don't know. I thought that was odd. I don't know why they would do that, what they would have to gain by taking the box to my equipment. You may think, well, this guy's a pack rat. You're right. I am a pack rat. You see some of those videos I do and I'll be standing in the garage and you'll see my old Sega Genesis box or my old iMac box from 2002. I'm that kind of guy. But also, it's great to have these boxes so that when you move, you can put the equipment back in its original box and it's secure and doesn't get dinged around and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Anyway, after the installation, things went pretty well for about, let's say a month and a half. One day, I realized that something was up and uh, every once in a while I would go to charge the car and it would throw the circuit breaker and I thought that was odd. So because of this, I had the builder come back out at my house and he's like, listen, I'm gonna, I gotta level with you right now. I am a Tesla owner, which I thought was odd. It's like, why didn't you tell me that before? But he's like, I'm a Tesla owner and I'm gonna tell you right now that this is BS. I shouldn't have to come over here for this. The, your charger should not be throwing your, your circuit breaker. You're on a 200 amp breaker here. I mean, this is the stuff is brand new. You shouldn't be having these issues. And he sends a, another guy out who specializes in, in that kind of stuff, but basically a, a, a certified electrician. And that guy checks it out and starts talking to me about art faults and all this kind of crazy stuff that I don't really know. And I said, okay, well, and that creaking you're hearing, that is my, my steering or something, my suspension. So unfortunately, yes, this story is a long one, people. My Tesla story is, is filled with all sorts of twists and turns. So I urge you to keep watching and please, please subscribe. The electrician did send someone out, and it's kind of funny. Um, he was high, <laughs> so they send out this electrician, and he's, in my opinion, he's stoned. Either that, or he was upset over something because his eyes were they. He looked he looked stoned to me, and he said, "Look, you have a bad arc fault. If I'm saying that correctly, I'm not an electrician. As a matter of fact." It took me a long, long time to start messing around with electrical things in the house. I am very, very cautious when it comes to handling uh, electrical systems or dealing with anything that's high voltage and that could shock you. So, um, when at, at some point after it would trip a few times, uh, and by the way, the guy did nothing. He said, you have a bad arc fault, not my problem, talk to your builder. And, but before I get to the builder, I called Tesla, Tesla called me back and someone sat on the phone with me and said, well, why don't you open up the high powered wall connector and let's see what's going on in there. And I did. And you will see that in the picture here that I opened it up. Well, the ribbon, for some reason it was disconnected and I don't know how it would do that because no one bumped it or anything like that. And those guys were the ones who wired it up and installed it, not me. So I plugged it up and went and, and did the breaker again, and everything seemed to be fine for a little while. But when I say a little while, I mean just like maybe a week or two, and then you're, you're back to having these problems again. So the summer goes by, and throughout the summer, randomly, I would lose the electricity, and I would have to go and 
go into the basement because my breakers is in the in the basement unfortunately so I would go into the basement and go through that whole routine which really started to get annoying it really did because I was having to go down there a lot and then finally one night it you know the charger kicked on I had it programmed the charge and I got an alert on my phone and it said your your charger has been disconnected and I was like that's strange so I immediately went into the basement and this was late at night and there was just this awful smell in the basement I shouldn't say an awful smell but it didn't smell good it smelled like something was wrong and I opened up the circuit breaker and went to touch the switches and they were extremely hot and I was like well, that's odd there was a surge protector that they also put on there I shut those off and left them off and from that point, you know, uh, I didn't have any issues, but I, I had no no use of my my charger anymore. So I called Tesla about it and said, hey, there's a problem. So here's where things get a little interesting or a little twisted. At this point, uh, like I had said earlier, so I'm kind of repeating myself, the builder did come by. He, he put in his two cents and then he sent an electrician out, the electrician who actually wired the house. And he went through everything and looked at it and he said, look, I'm going to sort this out. You have nothing to worry about here. I vividly remember wiring this house. I Nothing, there shouldn't be any issues whatsoever. So he did a few things and said everything should be fine. I'm I'm really kind of mixed up right now because this whole electrical thing, the problems started in March. Well, really, they started in February because the un installation was done on February 6th, 2017, and then everything came to a head by October 20th. So you have this roughly this eight-month period where I dealt with all these issues all regarding the electrical system and I was by the time this was all resolved I was just livid as you saw in that other video I was just I had just had enough after all of that I finally had the electrician come back out after a very long and uncomfortable conversation. The electrician reluctantly sent someone else, or actually, I'm sorry, he sent the guy who actually did the installation. We go downstairs, we look. At this point, I have no way to charge at home, so I'm frustrated. We go down there, and immediately, we see this. Yeah, I was, I was not happy. I got plenty of pictures and video to cover that. Basically, actually, I'm going to show you what happened. Okay, so here's what's going on. The, the breaker for the Tesla charger caught on fire and it welded a piece of itself to the breaker bar, I believe they call it. So because of that, I'm going to get a whole new panel here. They had to order it, though. So they t it tested everything. I had to literally turn on every bit of electricity going in this house. Everything you could think of that would be on this breaker I had to run it So and do some tests while charging it. So I'm back to being able to charge. These are the Tesla. These are for the Tesla charger. You throw this off to throw the circuit breaker and this is what was happening this one uh, this would actually stay on until until the incident happened when it burned out 
and here's the surge protector. Now you'll see these little spaces here. Basically what happened, the bar on this side. From this point, well, from the moment they did the installation, they were forever tied to the, the electrical system in this house. So they are, they, there is a lifetime warranty on their work. Therefore, anything else goes wrong with this house, with the electrical system, I have to call them and they have to come out and deal with it now. The builder will have nothing to do with it anymore. And that's fine because that's what they signed up for. So they are forever tied to this. It has to go right or it's on the electrician who did the Tesla wall charger installation.